welcome the paleobotanist who's obsessed with fossilized plants. He's the director of the biggest natural history museum in the world, and he's the host of Polar Extremes. Please welcome Kirk Johnson. I went to Ellsworth Island 36 years ago when I was 23 years old. It was the first time I went on a, like a genuine expedition. It was a hairy expedition. There's four of us flew up and spent an entire summer in Ellsworth Island. And it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. It says an island the size of England that has polar bears and white wolves and musk oxen, and the ground is frozen to a depth of a thousand feet. The show trees are a thousand miles off the nearest tree. And there are these incredible fossils. We were finding fossils of crocodiles and turtles and snakes at that latitude. And it, it kind of blew my mind then, and I've never forgotten it. And when people ask me, what's the most amazing place you've ever been? I always say, oh, it's But it was been 36 years. And so I just wanted to go back. So this was just a big scam for you to get to go to the place. Correct. No, no, I think mean, that what I realized was too that, that nowhere in the world better tells the story of our climate's Earth's past because or the Earth's kind of past, because here's a spot that is so incredibly frigid and cold, and there's really obvious evidence that it used to be warm and moist. And that, remember, I was there first in 1984, before climate was a big issue in our nation and our world, and I was a paleontologist, but it became really critical that, hey, wait a minute, paleontology, in particular, paleontology of the Arctic, is a really compelling and obvious way to communicate the present situation with climate on planet Earth. So it's not just the climate of the past, it's the climate of the future. So what was it like, we finally did get you to Ellsworth Island, it was quite an ordeal. And so how do you get there? And what is it like to be there? And are there any other, uh, do people go there every day? I said it's really hard to get to it. In fact, it was as hard to get to in the summer of 2018 as it was in the summer of 1984. You fly to the northernmost jet landing strip in North America, a place called uh, Resident Cormorals Island, latitude 75. And you get in one of those little planes and you fly north for 500 miles. And then you look for a place to land. And the first time we went there, you just kind of looking around for a place to put the plane down. And the, the pilots also come down and to touch the wheel on the ground and see if the ground was soft or hard. And we did the same thing this time. It was just like it. When we landed, the, the opening scene where we were landing um, on the spot, it was a really nice, warm day. It's like 65 degrees and sunny. You're like, wow, this is going to be great. And then the plane left and it started snowing. And it was July. And it, it's, that's the key. And this is a place where. Um, it's dark and cold for most of the winter, and in the summer, it's bright and cold, and there's about a one month growing season for the plants. Those little tiny arctic willows, which are this tall, they grow, they start growing in July. Are, are those trees? They're, they're woody, but they're not really trees. Anything this tall could probably be called a tree. It's like a junior bonsai or something. But, but literally, they grow for about a month, and then their leaves turn color, the leaves fall off and drop half an inch to the ground. So they're just fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're really, they are just a little, little tiny woody thing. It's the only woody plant on the entire place. So, of all the places that you went on this, and we sent you to a lot of places, what was the most extreme? Is Elsmer Island the most extreme place? In terms of what it took to get a film crew to that spot, we were as far away from any sort of help as anywhere else. Even when we were in Antarctica, we had a Chilean base nearby so we could get help. But in this spot, when the plane left, there were what, one, two, three, like eight of us, and the nearest human was literally like 500 miles away. 